Hello and welcome to episode 12 of Chemistry in 15 Minutes or Less. My name is Audra and this review lesson is on chapter 6 and 7, part 5, Covalent and Molecular Compounds. Just some things to quickly go over are bond energy and bond length. Now, bond energy is the energy required to break a bond. And bond length is basically the length from nucleus to nucleus in a bond. Pretty simple. Um, you can sometimes tell based on whether it's nonpolar covalent or polar covalent. Remember we talked about this in the last one, that's about what they look like. So as you can see how much energy is probably going to be required to break the bond, how long the bond's going to be, etc. But most importantly what we're going to talk about now is molecular formulas. Now, a molecule is a neutral group of atoms held together by covalent bonds. These can exist on their own and are not charged, and molecular formulas show the types and numbers of atoms combined in a single molecule. Now, this sounds like an empirical formula, but it tends to differ from the empirical formula by being some multiple of it. Now, in order to do this, you need molar mass and percent composition of the compound. There is a formula for molecular formula to figure out your multiplier to figure it out from the empirical formula which looks like this. You have the molar mass of the compound, which you either find online or it's given to you in the problem, over the molar mass you determine by the empirical formula, which basically would be if you have one mole of this times one mole of this, whatever that theoretical value would be times what it actually is, and this will give you your multiplier. Now, for an example, let's say you determined something in the empirical formula to have a formula of CH. As you know, take one mole of carbon times its molar, its molar mass, one mole of hydrogen times its molar mass, which gives you 13.02 grams per mole. Now, let's say the specific compound you're talking about has a value 78.11 grams per mole. That's what the molar mass actually is. And you take it divided by your molar mass, which gives you a multiplier of 5.999, which is 6. So that means the molecular formula C6H6. Now to write a molecular formula, out in words. The less electronegative element goes first, and it has, it will have a prefix, but only if it's greater than one, plus the first element name, and then your second element almost always have a prefix, there are some exceptions we'll talk about, plus the second root of the element, and the I prefix that you'll recognize from ionic compounds. Now these prefixes here are hydrate prefixes, which if you remember I told you would come back to haunt you, which basically this is how you'd name something like, say, carbon dioxide, which means that its formula would be CO2. It's pretty simple. Now there are some exceptions to this rule, and most of them contain hydrogen. Now most hydrogen molecular compounds that contain halogens don't use prefixes, and other hydrogen molecular compounds don't tend to use prefixes either, like we don't call it dihydrogen monoxide, we call it water. And another exception is what's called ammonia which is something you will need to memorize, which is NH3. That's all there really is to that one. Another thing we did briefly mention is inorganic molecules don't contain carbon most of the time. I know this episode is short, but the next ones need as much time as possible, and I want to break them up logically. So, this should conclude episode 12 of Chemistry in 15 minutes or less. Feel free to leave questions or suggestions in the comments below, and be sure to follow the in-video links, check out the playlist, or head over to my channel for more videos on Chemistry Review. As always, I hope this is helpful, and have a great day.